the Dark Lord. I'm back in the motherfucking building. And I'm Kimmy, Miss Royal Bloodline, in the building with y'all I already know. And today's lecture is very powerful, okay? Um, everybody that's checking this out live is, um, I'm going to say y'all are smart and y'all tapped in because this is a very uh, ancient science. It's a very high science. Uh, and it's a very rare science. Uh, and we're going into what we call Oud, okay? Uh, or Argar Wood, okay? Argar Wood, okay? So, um, the reason we're going into this is because pretty much in the East, okay, um, people are who are really uh tapped in spiritually are hip to what this is about okay and um it this is one of the things hidden from those of us in the west uh we have no clue about what it is what it does and something so valuable okay that makes billions of dollars every single year that grosses billions of dollars every single year is not talked about in the west at all and it's hidden and it's hidden very well, okay. And um, so, so a lot of you that um want to uh invest in like gold and things like that, you gotta get your hands on this too. Well, it's hidden so well to the point that these trees that the oil oil is made from is actually becoming extinct. So far, they grow in um. What is it like Southeast Asia, Cambodia? Uh, what's the other one that you was talking about earlier? In Southeast Asia, it's like a few countries, you know, that the trees are grown in. But because the they have like a new a industry that deals with the perfumes and things of that nature, that of course you know that they have to be greed. And instead of them waiting for these, um trees to grow a particular type of fungus they actually are just chopping them down uh just crazy they just ODing on it and not giving the trees the the proper time to um ferment this fungus that produces the ooze not all the trees produce this so it's very rare and these particular oils take a long time to ferment to get their purity in their essence you know to do what it is that they do so it takes what well over what like a hundred years it takes about a hundred years or more so that just lets you know the potency but you know like there are it's very famous but it's not famous it's only famous to those who are in the oil industry as far as perfume companies that are making a production to produce their own fragrances yeah, oud is literally, um, it's more va- it, it's more valuable than gold, but it's it has more benefits. It's better, okay. Um, so one, um, is very good with uh depression. All right, this is something that will knock depression right out. Right. You know, a few times of you wearing it or burning it. Okay, it's very good. All right, if you thought gold when you you know, store gold, wear gold, or whatever is good with psychic energy, this is better than that, okay? Also, with attracting money, this is better than that, okay? Um, yeah, almost every single um designer perfume, you know, the high-end stuff, you know, the stuff that costs about 1800 uh, two thousand twenty five hundred have a base of oud, okay. So you know, major corporations are hip to what this is, okay, and they do not try to reinvent the wheel. They do not try to duplicate it. It's, you cannot duplicate it, uh, but it is a very good idea to have it as your base, because when you put this with anything. Okay, it's going to make it smell very unique but very good. All right, so this is, you can take it out. This is a raw, the rawest form of oud that you would get. All right. 
and when you burn it, see this little piece right here is worth a lot, a lot. Okay, I can't even tell you how much. It's a lot. Um, uh, but when you burn it, um, it will light your room up just a little bit. Just you just take a little piece off, you burn it, it will light your room up. Or just smelling it, all right, will put you in the zone. It will yeah, put you in the zone. Okay, it is a, like it's a real uh potent aphrodisiac the highest of its kind okay when it when it comes to oud there is no fragrance more potent and more powerful than oud that is a fact this is something used for thousands of years okay this is a science people have applied for thousands of years okay um comment in the chat y'all in the chat yeah, I need y'all asking questions and shit. All right. So, yeah. Um, remember, Oud is at the top. Okay. This is... Oud alone is a billion-dollar industry. All right. So, the fact that many of us in the West are not hip to this, we are off. Okay. Because um, you'll see uh, anyone who deals with Oud... Attracts a lot of wealth to them Okay Anyone who really deals with Ooh is spiritually sound They're a spiritually sound person Okay Anyone who deals with Ood, um, Is adept In whatever craft that they deal with Okay so I'm going to get back into that in a second um, But before we go back into uh, Ooh, You know I want to I talk about uh, Fragrances in general Okay, we we want to go into the metaphysics of fragrances and what they were originally used for and and um why they gross so much money. Uh we're going to get into that because no one really talks about that. Well, you're absolutely right about that, Terrain. Nobody really talks about oils, you know, um but we definitely need to understand that there is a big difference between you know, like the oils like oud or frankincense or whatnot, and there's a different, you know, like people have essential oils, and then they have those type of oils. You got certain oils that you wear, certain oils that you burn, you know, and you it, there's, a, there's always a major difference. You know, a lot of different fragrance come from, like, resins and, um, you know, not only can you burn the oils, but you can also burn wood. You know, or you can burn like the uh, the recents, you know, so they um, have different properties to them. And a lot of people surprisingly don't know that these oils carry certain magical properties or certain healing properties that um, we could use, you know, like on a regular day basis, you know, or um, but with oh, that's not something that you want to od on you don't have to because it's so rich and so potent that you want to preserve it as much as possible because like i said you know like a while ago that this is a particular oil that is going extinct you know so definitely um can you tell them about like the the different oils that you know about perfume wise um so the other two fragrances i wanted to get into was um fragrance frankincense and myrrh mm -hmm. all right and, that's supposed and to be like a famous these uh perfumes were used to feed deities all right so right. the whole industry of fragrances all right or scent mm -hmm. was originally used to feed the deities that we had okay so we had like the netaru you know we had different pantheons of energy uh, deities that we would deal with all over the world and it was a known thing that you would have to burn fragrances in order to feed them okay uh fragrances uh if you're into magic you got to get really high into the science of fragrances all right okay uh most fragrances uh have a gender okay yeah. So while frankincense will be male, uh, myrrh will be female. 
Okay. They have date. They have dates. Friday and Saturday. Right. Right. So you know they have gender. They have days. Some are unisex. Okay. But uh, fragrances also have light, uh, weight. Okay, a a specific color. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's why when you burn a fragrance uh, and and of course a very distinct unique vibration so that's why when you burn a fragrance the entire atmosphere in your room changes all right so that is important to understand all right i want a lot of you to get away from the fragrances that you already know okay because we got to deal with change and we got to deal with uh we got to go deeper get into exotic fragrances that do not that are not um cheap okay fragrances shouldn't be cheap you know like for example like if you get uh frankincense from uh sudan you know the rawest form is not gonna be a few dollars and that's what you want so don't just go to your your incense man okay and your oil laid no Go exotic with your shit so you can completely change the vibration in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Another thing, too, though, like I have a lot of people that always come to me and they looking to attract a mate, whether it be a male or a female, you know, and one of those things. Well, I'm going to put my mouth in it. So one of those things that can help people to attract a mate that they're looking for is oils. Certain scents will attract people to you. Um, But you definitely got to be careful with it because it is potent. You know, like even just talking about oud alone has a sexual energy attached to it. And it's very intoxicating, you know. So for those who are just really worried about find, attracting somebody. Now, once you attract them, is a whole nother story. But just to get, you know, to get the ball rolling on finding the boo thing definitely look for the the love attracting properties you know not only do they have love attracting properties but they also have money attracting properties you know so you dealing with some finances and you know you take that oil you put your intentions into it rub it in the palm of your hands and in the palm of your feet so that you can walk into money or have money handed to you you know or just be creative with the ritual because it already has its own property. So you're putting your intentions into what the property is that you want to attract from the oils. Um, get real exotic with your oils, and you gotta be a chemist. You gotta be a chemist. Yeah, this is um, this is what I want y'all to do because I see a lot of you going to oils and. You read like these um these books that are real cliche, and because you are dealing with like a cliche um oil, right? Even if it is just frankincense or or you know like or um even you know even if it's if it is, if it is the raw rocks, you're not going deep enough to get that exotic vibration. So go deeper, you know, go, you got to be a chemist and you got to experiment and, uh, just a rule of, a general rule of thumb. If, if it's cheap, it's not quality. You're All right. Know if it's, cheap. Uh, it's not going to cost you hundreds of dollars. Okay. The only thing that gets into the hundreds is the oud, but it should not cost you a few dollars. All right. Um, yeah. So if you, if you are looking to do high level alchemy. Or high level money magic. Don't get something that costs a few dollars because it's not gonna give you the vibration you need. All right. Um, so with that being said, going back to Oud, mm-hmm. um, because it's so exotic, uh it's rare, okay, it costs a lot. You have a lot of fake oud out there. All right. Yeah, uh, the and mm-hmm. anyone that has worn real oo knows the difference okay all right so um there is a website or two that have some pretty good oo or you can get it from me 
All right, I can get you some quality stuff. All right. Um, typically, you know, if you want to get some raw, good oud, you'll be paying between one fifty and three hundred. Okay. So look at that price range if you're gonna go online. All right. It is real hard to get some good stuff though. Just being real. Even online, you'll get something uh you you'll be paying three, five hundred or whatever, and it'll be fake as hell. All right. This is something that it's so potent you can cut. Easily uh-huh. cut. Mm-hmm. And you can cut it so much. Um just the, the the tiny extract of it was still it would still smell good, but you don't want that. You want the raw you want the real stuff. And another general rule of thumb, the real stuff is black. The darker the better. If it's light, it's fake and it's cut like crazy. And, and that might not even be it. Okay. Down, like um it won't be as thick as it runs. You won't see that little slow bubble, you know, like at the top. Can I be heard back? Yeah. <clears throat> um yeah, so um another thing I wanted to say is that um this is something that you're not going to just get at a a, a small oil shop, even a big one. It will be fake. Uh and the reason the reason you won't get it is not because it's, it's several reasons. Okay, one, it is it's expensive to buy in bulk, so people are not just gonna go buy it in bulk and have it. Some people will, all right, but not not a lot of people is go, are gonna do that. They cannot afford it. It costs a lot of money, a lot of money, all right. Especially to buy it in bulk, it's not happening. All right, two, because of the secret. All right, remember, this is something preserved uh, in a lot of secret orders, especially orders in the East, in the Mideast. Um, you know, we got secret societies, you know, like the triads. You know, we got ancient ninja orders. You know, we got ancient Islamic Sufi orders uh, that know the secret, and they will not tell you about, ooh, that is one of their highest secrets. All right, and they will tell you about it as they're wearing it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That is correct. They will not tell you about it as they're wearing it. Okay. And um so you're not going to get it like that. All right. So when you get a good source, hold on to it. Right. All right. And um you know, it might take you a few trials before you get the real thing. All right. Like I said, um I can help y'all with that. You know, I can get you the real shit, the official shit. All right. This is something, you know, just a little dap just just this much it'll have the room woofing like crazy okay and it smells really good they call it the scent of heaven it smells like heaven all right um they say that it smells like melanin yeah it smells like melanin <laughs> okay well go into how um cuz i know a lot of us may work with the spirits or they may you know like be trying to become further educated on um working with the spirits can you tell them like how does these fragrances whether it's ooh, whether it's frankincense or myrrh like how do you better work with spiritual energy dealing with the oils or even the the recents like the smoke speak of the or with the smoke um <laughs> so all right so Oil fragrance is a, it is within the fabric of creation, right? So you'll have sound, um, light, fragrance, okay, water, but fragrance alone is, um, yeah, fragrance alone is etheric. Fragrance alone has its own realm, okay? Fragrance is also alive, all right? 
So you're dealing with a whole nother realm. Okay. So when you when you start applying the fragrances regularly, okay, uh inconsistently, your spiritual game will be at the top. Okay. Um and, and it will be at the very top because this is like I said, the oil is at the height. It's at the height. Okay. I in every real spiritual tradition, the oil is at the top. The fragrance, the smell, the scent is at the very top. Uh spirits will cater to you if you smell good. Okay. Um, but understand what smelling good is, all right? So that means cheap ass cologne, cheap ass um <laughs> Whatever the fuck, some old flea market shit. Some flea market shit <laughs> is is not appealing enough. Mm -hmm. So you know, like you're not gonna get the Orishas to bang with you like that. You don't smell good enough. All right, don't just use it to attract the mate. That's easy. Pheromones, S simple science. Right. You can do that's a, oil that's the you could do a that's shitload of stuff. All right, that's a simple science. All right, but you want the Orisha to be attracted to you sexually. Then we could then you can take that energy into a whole nother dynamic, all right? So understand that, all right? Um yeah. So what what fragrance would you use when working with a uh, Orisha? It so are you saying that you basically working with the Orisha to attract sexual energy or is it for more than just that reason alone? When it comes to fragrance? Yes. Very good question. Um, that is just one uh benefit that you might be able to pull uh wearing a, a good oil. All right, but because oil is uh vibration alone, right? So a certain oil might be a uh, aphrodisiac but it's positive vibration or uh this oil might have a frequency or gigahertz, okay? Cuz oils have sound as well it's another it's another science but uh it might have the uh gigahertz of love all right and then oshun is attracted to that too so no you do not wear it just to attract uh sexual energy to spirits or orishas or whatever or deities you don't that's that's a very good question because i know a lot of people uh will will think that mm -hmm. it's a very good question and also, I would say dealing with these oils, because I know like a lot of people, everybody and their mama makes soaps, <laughs> you know, and spirit baths and things of that nature. Some people even make their own incense. And, you know, like when you're working in magic, incense are not really just about smelling good. It's about creating that frequency in the air that you want to um get a desired effect from some of the uh, women in the group i did you know refer them this book that shows you how to create your own incense so this is very important when we're talking about oils because you can resend your incense with that particular type of oil and you know like you see the veves that we make well, a lot of the veves we might use like nag champa to feed the um the cornmeal with you know that particular energy or that particular scent, you know, because it's going to attract that orisha that we're dealing with. You know, like if I did like a big ocean veve or you know, uh Shango, how we did Shango, we did Papa Leg, but these last two big veves we put um incense around the cornmeal while we were doing the veves and that also heightens the energy of the magic that we was using for that particular ritual so if you are you know like kind of hinting into alchemy as far as making your own incense um i wouldn't suggest sawdust what's the other one that you can make it with charcoal for those who are learning to make the incense you want to pretty much do charcoal because they're way more uh safer than sawdust so just had to put a little tidbit out there um there's another thing i'm gonna challenge y'all with if y'all really paying attention um all the oils and the incense that you're using now 
and the the uh, stuff that you're burning. Don't burn nothing of it. Don't light any of it. Change your whole shit up. Okay. There's a lot of shit out here. I'm talking about exotic, high vibration stuff. So if you're like, yeah, I burn frankincense all the time, then guess what? You're stagnant. All right. If you're like, yeah, you know, I love this um, patchouli, you're stagnant. And you are extremely closed minded. So go outside of the box. Yeah, because given the basic. The basics, the basics and oils, whether whether you practice in magic or whether you just playing out spiritual or religious, the main basic ones that people deal with is sandalwood, patchouli, frankincense, myrrh, sage. Hold on, I want to comment on that. Mm-hmm. That's the basics in America. Right. So it's not even a basics. Matter of fact, it's bullshit. That's the <laughs> elementary. It's not a bullshit. Elementary. Elementary, no, it's elementary, and you gotta get out of that. All right, if y'all want to go deeper, all right. Uh, one of the ways to stay the same, even if it's a high vibration scent, Mm -hmm. is to burn the same damn scent. So, if y'all are looking for real change, then um, burn something different, first of all. All right, change the frequency, it's like an oil feng shui. You know, like, because your home has energy, too. So, like, if you always burn in sage, if you always burn in Palo Santo sticks, you know, like, it's kind of like that energy is almost immune or something. So, you have to definitely switch it up. You know, um, like, if you don't burn, if you end up burning sage all the time, just burn Nag Chumper or something one day, just for example. You know, like, you definitely want to... Switch up that energy so you won't get redundant, you know, with that. And as you grow, as your frequency change, you want to go higher in frequency in what you use in your practices. You know, so definitely switch it on up. Right. Right. Yeah, so um, switch it up. Switch it up, all right. Um, um, cause a lot of you burn like some watered down shit. <laughs> Why you putting them on blast about what they be burning um, down? Or? It's not about putting them on blast. It's more <laughs> that no, nah, I see, I see where you're coming from, but um, it's more that it's not gonna invoke no change. I see a lot of people want to transform right now. A lot of people want to go deeper, and uh, you know, I get a lot of inboxes like, hey. Take me deeper to the dark side. I'm like, um, Can you, you swim? <laughs> like, you ready? You ready to invest in some two, three hundred dollar oil and burn that shit for a month straight? You know, and that's gonna take. Listen, no one burns exotic oils or money vibration oils and is still broke. It's not possible. Okay. It's like wearing a lot of gold and still being broke. You see how she's smelling on this, <laughs> right? See that? I call that happy All right? oil. I ain't going to even lie. <laughs> Some expensive shit. Yes, honey. Okay? It will just throw you in that zone. People go around. I'm a, uh, I will inbox you some, uh, a documentary. People go around burning argo wood. And smelling it, not even, not yet. Yeah, no, no, they're having, they're not, they can't, you can't get high off of this. But they having, they're in a circle, and they're just smelling it, having a sniff cipher, like she said. You can't, you're not getting high off of it, but it does something to you, right? And when it does something to your, your psyche, right? It also shifts your cells, okay? So molecularly, you will change form. Okay, so again, so people who who smell this frequently, they're going to look different. All right. All right. They're going to look uh, younger. All right. It's going to reverse their cells and aging. All right. And like I said, this is a very good antidepressant. Just smelling it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, 
so yeah, we we want to get into that. You know, we want to spend money on wood, quality wood to burn. All right, you know, um, yeah, because um, spiritual practice is not always about attracting certain things to you. You know, it's it's not all like even when you're dealing with the oils and stuff, it's not all about attracting money to you. It's not all about you know getting the magic popping, but in order for certain things to transpire in our lives, in order for us to get to a certain level that we want to be spiritually, we definitely need to try new things. You know, a lot of us, especially as Asiatics, are going through a healing process. You know, we deal with so much trauma just being a melanated people that we need to um just elevate on a spiritual level sometimes it's not always about practicing magic it's about bettering yourself from within you know we have to unlock a lot of um chambers within our mind that has never been open and these scents will do that you know like i talk to a i'm sure terrain does too but me personally i talk to a lot of people who suffer from some form of trauma you know and we want to get into your subconscious mind where everything you know those are where the thoughts become things those where that hidden trauma becomes acidic or it um becomes um a illness you know, so these oils, they do have a lot of healing properties. And that's just one of the major reasons why I love me some oils. I want to uh, answer a question. Somebody said, what about Moldavite incense? This is what I'm talking about. Moldavite incense. So you're talking about meteorite incense. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Exotic shit. So um, I noticed somebody else put dragon's blood. Mediocre. Typical. No. <laughs> All right. But I like dragons. All right. right. Um, no. Um, it's not exotic enough. Well, it may not be exotic It's still enough. in that circle. Of sandalwood, of, patchouli, of, all that stuff. Yeah, of your basics, and you're not going deeper. And people just started All right. To now, it, hold on, hold on. Oh, let me cut you real quick. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a beginner and you never heard of dragon's blood, yeah, by all means. But if there's some shit you're doing regularly. No, if cut it out. Veteran. Right. Yeah, if you're a veteran, you know, definitely, eh, you know, and, but see, we're also looking at certain things that a lot of people use dragon blood and all that stuff because that's the most convenient thing to find. But even still, if you're using dragon's blood, if you're using, um, what's that, the frankincense and all that type of stuff, you still have to look for quality because... People love to say that bullshit, and they say, well, this is it, you know, because they're trying to get a dollar. They don't care about your spirituality after that point. You know, um, not only are there good oils out there with that, with healing properties and scents to them, what I have start to fall in love with is burning wood. Powerful energy. Yeah, I'm going to... Um yeah, wood is very good, right? Um, because you know it's still certain alive, wood, right? Yeah. Certain type of wood. Um, you know, damn, I lost my damn train of thought. Shit. You talking about the wood? <laughs> Weird. Talking damn. About um, I I guess um, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I had a George Bush moment. Oh wow. Yeah. Um. All right, so they say that the West, okay, us in the West are are eighty something percent of us are way off when it comes to the concept of scent, right? Like perfumes and stuff. Like we don't even get it, okay? Um, this is why you know it's a billion dollar industry all over the world. You know, we on like the tail end of it, just now figuring out what it's about. So when you realize that, then you go, hmm, this is maybe something I actually really need to study. Right. 
okay so this is what you know this is what y'all gotta get this is like this is a it's a science it's a science within the science all right and it's very sophisticated and if you if you get good at the science you will ma- manifest things that you want left and right but again i gotta go back to this mm-hmm. right if you go and master this science you can't be like okay dragon's blood sage patchouli <laughs> sandalwood no you gotta throw all that out for a minute and go to the east where they got exotic stuff things that tibetan monks use right because you're not going to catch tibetan monks burning dragon's blood for protection they're going to burn something a lot more potent a lot more powerful and it smells better and it costs a lot more all right so up your fragrance game all right and another reason why it's so easy for them to try to play the west is because a lot of these dealers they are right there where these trees or wherever they get in the oils from are indigenous you know like ooh, you can find it in cambodia from what i heard the one in cambodia is much richer it has a acquired smell that's slightly different from the one that you make it as um right exactly but they still be getting it in though you can't tell them rich folks that oh we we got this ooh, you know like we got this ood on deck and a lot of people that are coming out like uh what's his name something for it i forgot his name tom for it they throwing it into their fragrances yeah, that's what i wanted to say um you uh designer perfumes the most exotic ones have a base of ood and they get it. They get what the rest of the West doesn't understand. All right. A lot of us are played every other week. Right. Right. So if somebody comes up to you and they go, hey, smell that. It smells good. Right. Yeah. This is called mm-hmm. passion lust. Right. And musk. <laughs> musk this and that. Right. It's some cut shit. It's super cut. And it won't give you an ounce of of what you can actually get out of it spiritually if you actually if you actually got the root of what it was so you know that takes you like into essential oils and really knowing the science behind it all right so you know study this as a craft you know study this as a craft uh let me see what's going on in the chat here let's see somebody said palo santo that's my joint I love Palo Santo. Oh, man. Like, I think I might have had a midway orgasm when I smelled Palo Santo sticks because it got that minty kick and it just marinate in the house like all day long. I think we OD'd on Palo Santo sticks like last year. (laughs) You know, um, I definitely revert back and forth to Palo Santo sticks quite often you know it dies a certain way to get that smell and it's authentic like i don't even know if you can plagiarize palo santo sticks what you think no you can't plagiarize none of that um i want to say that um some something else to look at right you know in in the world of commerce the one thing that has made people rich very rich okay you know if you look into like um dubai okay saudi arabia Mm -hmm. right it was always oil and fragrance all right it was always oil and fragrance that was the thing and it still is okay so a lot of us is like you know it's like gold and, oh, yeah. That guy, okay, I know it may be some more in the group chat, right? If you have a Circle 7 and you look into um, the Circle 7 or the Holy Quran of Mecca, you will see this guy on the front page or so. And what's his name? Saud somebody? He's one of the richest guys in Arabia, and he was one of was 
one of those people who were like very wealthy in the industry of oils and incense trade. Mm -hmm. Um, particularly selling frankincense. Right. You know. That's just an example of how they making. That's an example of why the Saudis are extremely ridiculously rich, right? To this day. All right, so this is not nothing to overlook, all right, because um, you know, uh, it was a point in which, you know, it you could smell the scent of frankincense coming from Saudi Arabia, from a whole other country. You could smell it coming, uh, you can smell the scent. That's how much, uh, frankincense was being exported and burned in Saudi Arabia. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, um, yeah, so scent has everything to do with moolah, okay, all right, you just need the scent, you need to burn it, and you need to wear it, and your money is going to be good. That is the reason why Islam is what? Islam is what, babe? Financially backed by? By, um, oil, Okay. All right, so you know one of the major, the biggest, uh, religions on the planet. All right, um, is financially backed by oil alone. Okay, fragrance, smell alone. All right, so that you know you gotta dabble into that world. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, for those of you who are tired of just dealing with the. Orishas, and you want to start dealing with jinn, you want to get into other entities, angelic energies, and you want to deal with them on a little bit more intimate level, they won't even come close unless you smell a certain way. All right, they won't come close to you, you will not be able to interact with them. The, the, the main thing that will draw them to you is how you smell, all right? So um, you got to master how you smell, how your house smells, okay? Uh, remember, it, uh, the a potent fragrance will straight up change your aura, mm-hmm. all right? You won't be mad no more if, if, if it's positive and potent enough. No, okay? Um, well, it'll change the energy of somebody walking into yeah. your home. Right. Somebody walking into your home... With this energy, you know, and when they come into your home, like, I'm going to tell you, plants do it, oils do it, certain incense will change a person's energy that walk into your home. The first thing they need to do when they hit your threshold <clears throat> is take off them damn shoes. Then once they walk in and they get a, a whiff of those scents, whatever they might have been going through before they walked in your house trust that energy is going to change up i forgot what i wanted to tell you about girl i had some tea and it probably was some drama she probably was mad at her boo thing or whatever you know and you absolutely right brianna the sounds that you play you know like we usually have singing bowls playing in our house we're gonna do a whole nother we're gonna do a whole nother lecture on sounds oh, uh definitely. in a week all right we're gonna get we're gonna tap into that um the reason we ain't do like oils and sounds and this is because oils is a whole science that you gotta come focus on as a science. And we gotta get back all right. to work in a little while. All right. Um uh, yeah, but uh if y'all wanna call in, call in the number is nine one seven six zero five one four six nine. Call in, y'all. Call in. Why you had to say it like you about to DJ at the club? Um All right, let me see. Call in 917. I'm going to put it in the chat, y'all. 605-1469. I want to know what questions y'all have. Um, Chrissy Wow, I, I press, I practice this in a way in my office. It completely changed the aura. Right. So. 
putting a man um, on her co-worker. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if motherfuckers want to be all angry and shit like that, you know, oh, the, the thing is, the thing is that we can't change them, right? Like, we don't have time for that shit. So, and, and then also, we don't have time for them to fuck with our energy and aura because they're fucking mad. Mm, All right? Life. So, this is the thing, right? Somebody that's angry affects your fucking energy. Even if you tune them out, those colors off of your aura, they shoot off and they go into your aura. So, you can't just be like, all, right, all you got to do is tune them out. And they, no. no they, so, they, so that. what you do is you burn something real potent that smells really good, okay? Or if they just straight up negative, right? If they just straight up demonic, just all the energy out the room. what you do is you burn uh, a real strong protective energy, all right? That's what you do. And I guarantee you. That will work. All right. Um, whoever tried to call me, you missed your chance. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's what you want to do. Or call back. Uh, nope, nope. Um, it's so many ways we could use oil. So money, protection, what about love. So like, you know. What you mean? Okay, like you have the oils that you can burn and all that type of stuff, and it gives off like protective energy. But let's just say you you don't know what you're going to transpire when you're out and you're about, and somebody come and you know they need to get their little cartoon ass life. What do you need to wear protectively to be like boop? You got your blockers up. That's a good question. Um, so that's a very good question. I'm just saying. <laughs> so remember, right? You set the tone. Right. So you wear whatever vibration you're you trying to put out there. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to adhere to that. Right. Because your shit gotta be potent. So everybody follows suit. Alright. So don't go out there and be like, I need my protection or nah. Fuck that. We wanna go, I right, you know, I'm going out into positive energy. I'm gonna be the positive energy. I'm gonna set the tone. And then because I'm setting the tone Everybody around is going to be positive Because I'm carrying the most potency That's a very good question right. Because a lot of people get they, paranoid. they get paranoid it's And then they're wearing protection But guess what Wearing protection will, If you like money Will never attract you money Because it won't make you broke But it's not money attracting Because it's not the same dynamic mm -hmm. So that's something to think about Okay. Now, if you straight up like I don't know in uh, uh, a rough neighborhood or something like that, and you really feel like you need some type of protection, then that's cool. But like actually going out into the world where there's no real credible threat, set the tone yourself. Okay. Like even if you're in a in a rough neighborhood or not, and something like that, like wear the ultra positive energy. Okay. All right. To tell if something is positive, it's very simple. It smells sweet. Mm -hmm. Smells good. It smells really good. Really sweet. Rich. All right. So, um, study fragrance. Um, even without the fragrance, you can. Um, even without the fragrance, you can release certain uh pheromones that give off a certain energy where people don't have a choice but to you know be humble or just chill around you like i've done it you know um now sexual energy you have to be careful what type of pheromones you giving off but as far as just creating a certain aura around yourself it's like a, a vicious dog or just lay down you know or a person you might be walking into an office somewhere and the energy just might be stank, but as soon as you talk to that person, they may look like they had a bad day or something like that. As soon as you talk to that person, whatever they was going through, they're going to forget about it at that moment just because of how your aura is or how your energy is just giving off. We all are like kind of empathic on some level where we can just feel 
a shift in the energy in the room, you know, or you, you've heard of that elephant in the room. So sometimes you have to be that elephant in the room that just creating some strong energy, whether you wearing the oils or you just giving off the pheromones yourself. So um, the more you are um, practicing spirituality, right, higher vibration, whatever you want to call it, uh, the more you are tapped in, the more you're not a victim, right? right? So what I mean is that, so that means that if you're in a room and there's an elephant in the room and then this person is just straight up negative, right? Then you can't, you're not supposed to be affected by that. And if you are really on your shit, right? And you've learned certain things, you sh- you should know that if that person is allowed to affect the energy, then it's your fault. It's your fault. Because you know how to manipulate energy, right? So, because you know how to manipulate energy, you're supposed to know how to deflect it and change the environment in the entire room. All right. So this is this is going back to scent, oils, and smells, because you know, um, it's not hard to get your hands on some exotic stuff to use. Uh, when it's time to use it, all right? You know, um, uh, the last thing I wanted to say is, um, create uh, a real sanctuary in your home. Figure it out, all right? You gotta be a you gotta be a chemist. We're gonna stay on oils with this though. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, but when it comes to the when it comes to you right <laughs> when it comes to the smell. Of your home, right? This is where I'm gonna, uh, this is your homework. Figure out how to make a smell that's really appealing, right? Remember, we go in exotic oils, so don't be on that. Oh, yeah, I burn, not chop, no, fuck that, <laughs> All right? Um, figure out what's, what you really like and make it real unique, okay? So you can even blend. The right oil So you might have An incense Or you might have An oil burner Burning oil And an incense burning At the same time And every So Figure it out But by the end Of the month Everybody that comes To your home As soon as they walk Through the door Should be like Damn it smells good in here And they should not Want to leave or it feels good. Like, I don't know what it is, but it feels so good in here. Do that. Okay. Do that. All right. And I guarantee you, the following month, everything will go in your favor. All right. Because you created a vortex through scent. All right. Uh, study what scent actually is. A lot of people they just know it smell. It's something that they can smell, but scent are, is alive. It's alive. It breathes. All right. If if the scents were used to feed the deities, that means it's alive. Okay. So um. So the last thing I wanted to drop. You know, as far as the oud, argar wood, research that. Okay. Research the different types. Well, you got something you want to share? You sure? Yeah, oud is spelled O U D, O U D. Oh, O U D H. Oh, O U D H. Okay, and argawood. And argawood. Well, when you pull up oud, it's gonna give you the correct name for um the tree. Right. So you know, uh, it's grown in certain parts of the world. Okay. Uh, in the east. Okay, in in the Middle East. Uh, in Africa, that's where they got the most potent oud ever. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Um, and um, but you know when you put in argo wood, you you'll get what it is where it comes. From. But and do your due diligence and research. Right. All right. Um, again, something that will stand out. All right. Tibetan monks, uh, ninjas, uh, Islamic Sufis at the highest order or you know, the highest degree. Um. Sheiks, 
shakes. You know, I could keep going. Um, Imams. I could keep going. You high know, priest. high priests. Okay, if in every single culture, have a form of oud that they know about that they wear, and everyone uh, that I named at the highest level or the highest degree wears the oud regularly. All right. And they kind of deem it too strong for the regular people to wear. All right. So there's all this type of oud. All right. And everyone in high spiritual orders uh, at the highest degree is aware of their form of oud that they rock with. All right. So this is not something that just smell good. Right. Like, you know, it's, it takes a lot to have something that cost more than gold that's crazy like that's crazy um anything we want to drop no <laughs> all right um Not that I can think of. and there is um there's another type of ooh called uh royal kingdom Okay, Royal Kingdom is the most rare and most expensive piece of anything on the planet, period, is wood. Okay, I posted it in the group, all right? Uh, it's actually worth a thousand times more than gold, all right? Royal Kingdom, uh, is up, uh, you'll get prices up to $10,000 per gram, all right? Gold only costs $60 per gram. That's still a lot, still a lot, but $10,000 Per gram. That's a lot. For a tree. Uh, not even a tree. A piece of a tree. So, let me see. A gram of Royal Kenan would probably be like that much. And Yeah. $10,000. But when you burn it, everybody that burns it will tell you that it was worth that $10,000. Okay, so they burn it and they smell it and then they like in the zone and they really feel like it was worth the ten thousand dollars. Uh mind you, this does not get you high. But as she said, you have sniff ciphers, right? You seen that? Yeah, a sniff cipher. They be they smell and it they do, and it's a then a circle. Just, just to do this right here alone. Is it is it going? Okay. Just to do this alone, you're creating a motion. And it's going up not only into your nostrils to smell it, but it's tapping into that subconscious. You know, it's like you feeding off of the smoke. Like, literally, um, you have certain oils and certain woods that you burn that open up your psychic center. And all this is just, bloosh, just open up, you know. And it doesn't do it to the point where you're like, you know, like, hey, like you know, um, it can't be duplicated. It's the uh, the reason ooh costs so much is they say that nothing on the planet smells better than it. Mm -hmm. Uh, even the different type of ouds. Mm -hmm. Okay, people do entire lifetime studies on this because they're so fascinated with it. All right, so this is something when you when you actually smell it. I don't care how much you paid to get it. You will not say, oh, it's just oil. You're not going to do that. Nope. You won't feel that way neither. All right. It's not something where it's like, well, you know, pe some people are into oil. They actually going to spend a lot of money. You're not even going to feel that way. You are going to understand. So that it's a lot to say that. So something we're looking to. With that all said, if y'all interested in getting some oil for a decent price, okay, Hit me on the inbox. You know how I do. I only give you official shit. All right. Most of the time, the shit that I can get to you, I don't even profit off of. You heard? But um, the reason I want you to experience oud. All right. Whether you're going to burn it or whether you're going to. <laughs> you're funny. I'm just saying. Uh, like yeah, 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 she's right. She's right. You know, doing insect magic. You know, um, 
burn the most exotic shit out there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that people pay a lot of money for and be in that that energy. But um, you know if. If whether you're gonna burn it or whether you're going to wear it, all right, hit hit me up and I will hook you up. You know, I got some shit. I got some shit. I got some shit. Um, you know, um, I want you who are serious practitioners to um experience this shit. All right, uh, for a lot of reasons. All right, you uh, I want I want to push some of you. Deeper, right? And, and and when we going deeper, we gotta get out of that circle of smells that we know. We gotta go to shit that we never smelled before. That smell better than anything we thought smelled good. All right, because that um heightens your consciousness. I'm gonna get to that in one second. Okay, that's a good that's a good one. Um, so yeah, that's one. Um, again, I said serious practitioners because. Don't put this in the hands of a, of a womanizer, all right? Because, or a pimp, they will go crazy with this shit. So when you inbox me, I'm going to look at who you are. <laughs> gonna feel that I'm going to fill you out, all right? Um, yeah, and then... Um, and you she, can't fake frequencies. <laughs> right, so she uh, said something about uh, mantras in quality oil like oud well certain um oils you know you got these high priest sheiks shakes or whatever that will do tens of thousands of mantras with bees like this mm-hmm. they ain't using that 108 shit that y'all be uh <laughs> that y'all be using they use the real shit right like that and they'll have this much oil or whatever, especially like with ooh, and they'll do some mantras, and it will get actually darker. All right, so I, you know it's a ritual I can do for y'all if y'all interested. Like, like I said, hit me on the inbox. Uh, of course I'm gonna hit you with a good price, but you will experience the magic. All right. Um, uh, but yeah, zikers and um, or or mantras or chants in potent oil. And chanting it constantly on that potent oil, whether it's for money or protection, that's a whole nother level and degree of science. That's actually the deepest thing that we dropped, actually. And staying awake while you're doing it. <laughs> right, right. So you're doing tens of thousands of Boy, chants. I'm you. So for hours, you're chanting, and there's no breaks. You can't take no breaks. And that, that oil is being pounded. Remember, the oil is alive. The mantra is alive. It's being pounded. Uh, with that mantra Then when you put that thing on Alright So um, Look into that Alright So this, these are the higher degrees Of spirituality Sorcery Science That uh, we bring into y'all That they're not going to tell you People are not going to tell you this Alright This secret society shit So um, Inbox me if you got questions on this Alright Don't ask me nothing else randomly But um, Any last thing no, just always, I definitely appreciate you, Royal Family, for always tuning in to us as we, you know, like, elevate together to the next level. Uh, ladies, definitely um, be looking out for me, 7.30 Friday. I'm putting together a benefit lecture on women and healing from trauma. Uh, it's a benefit lecture because I am raising money for a sister in need of help. So if you can, please donate to sevenstagemetaphysics.com. All proceeds from that lecture will go to this sister. I will see you Saturday, 7.30 p.m. The last thing I wanted to drop, you know, I'm not going to drop all the details, but we will be supplying quality organic herbs you know and we're gonna have a a real quality some real quality lectures mm. all right we're gonna have a special guest come on and sit on the red couch the first one to do it and and, <laughs> and drop drop the science on the herbs yes. and you know you will be able to get that stuff from, from us for good pricing 
you know so yeah we got a lot uh coming up so um don't leave the group because somebody offended you you heard stay there because we got more shit to offer uh so with all that being said it's time to wrap this shit up uh, you know where to find us. Seven Sage Man Physics.com, Roy Bloodline 7.com. Like this video, subscribe, share it.